New research suggests that the evolutionary success of large predators was initially driven by the sheer requirement to be better hunters. Welcome back to Paleopedia, and before the reign of the dinosaurs, there was the reign of the synapsids. For the sake of this video, synapsids are basically mammals and their closest ancestral relatives. I do plan on getting more in depth into what synapsids are and were, but for the sake of this video, we're just going to keep it at that. And for about 60 million years from the end of the Carboniferous through the Permian period, synapsids were the dominant vertebrates on land, occupying dozens of niches and becoming the largest animals of the time. Now at the end of the day, these ancient synapsids weren't really all that big, especially when compared to the dinosaurs and even modern synapsids, the mammals. But for the time, they were very large. The largest herbivorous synapsids were around a ton in weight, with the largest carnivorous synapsids being around 600-700 pounds, so pretty significant. And at the time, they were kind of pioneers of their trade. They, along with early reptiles, were the first groups of animals to fully commit to a terrestrial lifestyle, straying away from the water unlike their amphibian ancestors, and becoming completely land-based. And while synapsids and reptiles of the time rapidly evolved and diversified throughout the land, there were some rising challenges, especially for predators. Specifically, it was the fact that herbivores were starting to get big and it was going to become harder to hunt these bigger prey items. And a new study suggests that bigger herbivores of the time was forcing the predators to change their hunting style and become more efficient. Around 270 million years ago, roughly halfway through the Permian period, herbivores were getting bigger and faster and the predators were following suit, but it wasn't just their size that was changing, it was also their jaw structure. Up until that halfway point of the Permian period, most predatory jaw structures were similar to their ancestors, being a lot longer with a lot of teeth designed to grab and hold on to prey, primarily prey that is more slippery, such as fish and amphibians. A good example of this type of jaw structure for earlier synapsids was Dimetrodon, having a longer snout with a lot of teeth designed to grip and hold on. And this hunting style of grabbing and holding on to your prey works really well if your prey is smaller than you. But as the prey item started to get bigger as the Permian continued on, this Joss type wasn't working. Grabbing and holding on to a prey item that's your size or bigger meant that the predators were increasingly at risk of pretty serious injuries. So in response to this new challenge, Predatory synapsids started to change their jaw structure to inflict more damage per bite. As the predators evolve, we start seeing a shorter jaw with greater muscle efficiency, with fewer teeth focused more at the front of the jaw. This gives the bite a lot of power and the ability to inflict very deep wounds. So these carnivorous synapsids were beginning to focus more on inflicting as much injury in one bite as possible, therefore killing the prey quicker rather than grabbing and holding on until the prey ran out of energy. And this new hunting strategy gave rise to the world's first saber-toothed predators, the Gorgonopsids, which were the top predators of the Permian period. These were predators designed to run down larger prey, inflict very deep and powerful bites, and then basically wait for the prey to die to its injuries. This change in jaw structure kind of set the tone for what later mammals would be using when they hunt. And this shift in the jaw structure coincides with the fossil record beginning to see larger and larger herbivores for the time. As the risk of injury while hunting large herbivores began to rise, the predators adapted to become better at killing those larger herbivores. This study also showed that after the synapsids shifted to this shorter, more powerful jaw structure, their diversity increased exponentially. And shortly after the jaw structure happens, we start seeing even more efficient jaw structures beginning to evolve, including having a faster bite or even a simply more powerful bite. And by the end of the Permian period, when synapsid rule died out during the Great Dying Extinction event, a lot of these jaws were looking a lot more like modern mammals today. And then after the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs, the last remaining group of synapsids, the mammals, readapted this shorter jaw structure and and perfected it even more to become the apex predators that they are still today. 